Hello everyone. Today we will have obstetric lecture, and today we will uh, see the topic that is called as CPD. CPD means cephalopelvic disproportion. Cephalopelvic disproportion is the term which is related with cephal. That means baby's uh, presenting part, or it is usually vertex, baby's head, and uh, pelvis, female pelvis. Uh, so it is a disproportion between fetus and baby so it is cpd it is cephalo pelvic disproportion it is disproportion between fetal cephal that is fetal head and female pelvis so that term is called as cephalo pelvic disproportion now cephalo pelvic disproportion is usually seen because of either cephal is defective that means fetal head is large for um, expected size or it have any abnormal growth or it is multiple uh, pregnancy uh, multiple parts are presenting so it is related with cephal that is defects in baby's head defect in the sense any abnormality or um, it is more than the expected size so that are the faults from baby's side cephal side and common is because of pelvic factors so cpd condition is mainly related with female pelvis so uh, this proportion between fetal cephal and female pelvis is called as cpd cephalo pelvic disproportion and this disproportion is mainly because of fetal factor it is large head large size head large baby like diabetic baby and twin pregnancies and any abnormal growth on fetal head and uh, maybe a uh, defective or abnormal presentation of baby baby may present uh, by face or any other uh, presentation that will call, cause uh, excessive presenting part or excessive length of baby and uh, that is uh, cephalopelvic disproportion from fetal side next is defect in female pelvis that we are going to see in detail now uh, defect in female pelvis female pelvis is mainly of uh, or commonly it is called as gynecoid pelvis uh, female pelvis uh, which is gynecoid it ha this gynecoid pelvis is usually uh, round in shape and uh, usually uh, it have anterior and posterior segments which are equal and spacious and sacrum angle is uh, more than 90 degrees and it is backward direction and usually uh, ischial spines are not prominent they are not so prominent and pubic arch is curved and uh, subpubic angle is wide and usually uh, this gynecoid pelvis is wide in size and shape so that passage of baby is very easy and delivery normal birth of baby can easily take place from this pelvis so normal pelvis is gynecoid pelvis which is round in shape, wide in uh, size and uh, ischial uh, spines are not so prominent. So bony prom prominences are not there so that baby's head can easily pass from this pelvis. So normal delivery is expected in gynecoid pelvis. Now there are some other types of pelvises and uh, some other types of pelvis and um, this pelvis uh, which are not uh, gynecoid pelvis and they are abnormal pelvis. Uh, these types of pelvis are anthropoid pelvis, android pelvis and platyploid pelvis. Anthro anthropoid pelvis uh, which is also uh, slightly common, uh, it is uh, anthropoid pelvis. In this pelvis normal delivery can be possible because it is not so narrow and it is uh, more or less uh, like gynecoid pelvis. Only a thing is that gynecoid is round in shape and this is oval in shape. But normal vaginal delivery or fetal passage is uh, possible in this anthropoid pelvis. Android pelvis, here the vaginal delivery or birth passage of baby is not possible because the cavity is triangular in shape. So it is very narrow. So baby cannot pass from this pelvis. So there is obstruction during passage of baby. And last one is platyploid pelvis that pelvis is uh, transversely oval so it is um, no there is no roundness in that shape uh, so that baby baby's head which is usually circle or round in shape so it is uh, transversely oval so baby's head is not able to pass from this and so there is obstructed labor 
so gynecoid pelvis is very common and this is the type of pelvis which is commonly seen in females but uh, vaginal delivery is also possible in this type of pelvis anthropoid pelvis is the second pelvis where vaginal delivery can be tried and uh, it can be uh, possible because the cavity is uh, oval in shape so uh, these are the types of pelvis where we can expect the vaginal delivery and passage of baby android and platypoid pelvis here uh, there is obstruction of labor so these are types of uh, abnormal normal and abnormal pelvis now uh, causes for this contracted pelvis now the causes are mainly congenital and acquired congenital as it is developmental problem some female have this type of gynecoid pelvis some females have this anthropoid pelvis some have this platypoid and some have android pelvis so it is congenital uh, it is a developmental thing in female so we cannot change the um, type of pelvis so it is congenital thing so congenital defect in pelvis and uh, second is acquired causes now in acquired there are uh, main is nutritional uh, defects because of the calcium and vitamin d3 deficiency uh, some in some female there is um, improper development of the pelvis and uh, the pelvis cavity is very narrow and there is usually osteoporosis bones are very uh, fragile and so uh, chances of pelvic fractures are more common in these type of women so whenever there is pregnancy because of the increased load uh, there may be some defect in the pelvic cavity and usually abortion takes place but uh, if pregnancy continues um, the pelvis is not so um, capable uh, so that the baby can pass through it so it is the nutritional defect in baby, uh, the patients because of the severe calcium and vitamin d3 deficiency so that is the main problem because of the uh, lack of uh, nutritional factor um, that is about the uh, nutritional thing in acquired first was nutritional because it is very common in india like country and uh, second is um, injuries various types of injuries uh, can be there in female that can be dangerous during the delivery uh, so mainly uh, fractures pelvic fractures because of any accident or major injury uh, tumors pelvic tumors tuberculosis of pelvis or tuberculosis of spine uh, arthritis severe degree of arthritis these types of uh, injuries or diseases that can be uh, very dangerous during the delivery if there is patient have history of tuberculosis previously then that tuberculosis spread in the pelvic bone and during the passage uh, because of the uh, tuberculosis or spread of the infection uh, passage of birth uh, passage of that baby is difficult uh, in pelvic fractures tumors again same thing because of the increased growth of tumor and other thing in the pelvis baby cannot pass from that pelvis so again there is obstruction of labor so diseases of uh, pelvis like tumors tuberculosis pelvic injuries accident fractures those are the things which can lead to uh, <clears throat> disproportion during <clears throat> delivery uh, next is diseases of spine like kyphosis and scoliosis these are the diseases orthopedic diseases which are uh, related with the spine <clears throat> spondylitis <clears throat> these are the diseases which can also cause the problem during the vaginal delivery baby cannot pass through the pelvis because of kyphosis scoliosis and uh, spondylitis severe spondylitis so these are some diseases other uh, diseases are poliomyelitis in these patients also there is narrow uh, pelvic cavity and because of poliomyelitis there is nerve problem also in that female so birth passage is not clear uh, hip joint diseases congenital hip joint diseases or other hip joint diseases, uh, diseases are also common where a baby cannot easily pass uh, so these are the diseases or various types of injuries to pelvis next is uh, developmental defect Uh, in this, uh, there are two types of diseases: Nicholas disease and Roberts disease. Nicholas pelvis. In this, there is failure of sacrum uh, bone or sacral ala to grow. There is failure of one side uh, sacral ala to grow. And in Roberts pelvis, it is a very severe disease where there is uh, both sides of uh, sacrum bones are not properly developed. So these types of diseases of pelvis, where patient have this um, failure of growth in the pelvic bone. So if there is improper growth of pelvic bone, baby cannot pass through this improper developed bone uh, or improper cavity, and so there is again obstruction during the passage of uh, birth. So uh, in this type of uh, 
pelvis or abnormality in this type of uh, diseases and various things related to this pelvis uh, because of the diseases, injuries, fractures, because of the developmental factors, because of the nutritional factors, uh, there is usually deformity in that female pelvis or in structure of that pelvis which disturb the birth passage of baby. Uh, now you have to assume uh, for the normal delivery baby has to travel from this female pelvic cavity. For normal vaginal delivery usually baby uh, fetus is in the uterus and where the normal presentation of baby is by vertex head is the uh, part which is presented which is at the lower direction and it usually enters in the pelvic cavity and from this pelvic cavity baby passes uh, from uh, the pelvic cavity and usually there is birth passage uh, that female pelvis is the birth passage for that baby and baby travels through the passage and then a delivery of baby usually take place. But if this passage is narrow, it is congested because of infection, injury, abnormal growth, baby cannot pass through the passage, baby cannot clear the path and so baby gets obstructed in that passage and so that leads to obstructed labor where baby stucks in the passage because uh, sometimes there is a wide uh, because narrow uh, pelvis, baby um, either baby uh, head baby's head is large and the pelvis is narrow sometimes there may be any abnormal growth in the pelvis like uh, a tumor or a tubercular mass uh, because of that baby cannot clear the pass passage sometimes uh, baby uh, the female pelvis is any developmental problem like uh, sacrum bone is not properly grown there may be a poliomyelitis where the pelvis is weak uh, sometimes there is severe calcium and vitamin D3 deficiency where pelvic bones are very fragile so that baby cannot pass through the, uh, this passage and baby is obstructed in the passage. In simple language, I uh, told you the concept of CPD. CPD means basically cephalopelvic disproportion where either baby is large or pelvis is small or vice versa. Uh, pelvis is also small, baby is large. So, we have to uh, be um, very clear whether the patient is or the pregnancy is CPD. That means that patient can go in vaginal delivery and baby can easily pass through the pelvis or not. So, this assessment can be done during ANC because at the last moment we cannot uh, like just give the um, opinion that female is a CPD female and uh, baby cannot pass through. We can easily do our diagnosis by doing some simple test by doing some simple examination. So, now how to diagnose this CPD patients? Before that, uh, you have to uh, very uh, you have to be very clear about the types of pelvis. Gynecoid pelvis is the normal pelvis where the cavity is round wide, and other pelvises are other pelvis like anthropoid and um, android and platypoploid pelvis. In that uh, cavity is not that oval shape or round, and different types of uh, cavity shape. I told you that uh, anthropoid is oval and uh, that android is triangular, and it is oval but uh, that platyploid pelvis it is the transversely oval cavity so uh, these types of pelvis where uh, uh, vaginal delivery is not possible so this is about cpd these are the causes for cpd where we had seen different types of causes uh, where there are defects in the female pelvis or in the baby now um, the case is of cpd and we have to diagnose Patient does not have any clinical features. Patient will not tell that she have contracted pelvis or baby is large size. These are not the things or no symptoms, no, no symptoms are from patient. So we have to diagnose this condition. Now how to diagnose this condition? We have to basically take proper history of that patient. If patient have any previous obstetric history of uh, previous labor and if that labor was obstructed, if the uh, immediate caesarean section was done because of the obstruction of labor, so careful history, past history should be taken. Uh, also a history of any pelvic fractures, recent pelvic fractures, pelvic injuries, uh, recent any tumors or tuberculosis, or uh, any major diseases or many surgeries or accidents like that we have to take detailed history from that patient. Next step is proper physical examination in that we have to basic test is height. 
height of patient is very important because usually short statured patients have uh, this uh, contracted pelvis and usually those patients require cesarean it is not compulsory that every short patient should have cesarean but majority short uh, statured patients have uh, contracted pelvis so uh, usually we have to careful for uh, uh, about height women less than 5 feet are likely to have small pelvis so they need cesarean so first of all uh, we have to take for we have to take her height next is we have to do other general examination of patient about uh, signs of anemia calcium level and other things and uh, next is examination abdominal examination during anc examination we uh, do all these things and abdominal examination we have to check for abdominal examination for fundal height size of fetus from this we can know whether the uh, single fetus is there or whether there is twin pregnancy whether the baby's head is large or it is average size so these are the basic inspection or palpation things which we can do in abdominal examination on palpation we can uh, palpate the presenting part which is usually a uh, head and it, it is whether it is a uh, normal sized or it is large whether it is a single or it is a uh, twin so these things we can do by simple doing pelvic examination abdominal examination and pelvic examination uh, now in pelvic examination only uh, there are some uh, very easy assessment techniques where we just give a slight pressure and we push the fetal head in the pelvic cavity gently we push the fetal head in lower direction so that that head enters in the pelvic cavity this is just a by manual examination abdominal examination only in pelvic grip we had seen many types of grip in ans examination pelvic polygrip where we grasp the presenting part we catch the presenting part with our hand and by simple technique just by giving gentle pressure we push the fetal head in the pelvic cavity if it easily enters in the pelvic cavity that means there is no cpd if it requires more pressure to enter then there is moderate cpd and if fetal head absolutely does not enter in the pelvic cavity that means there is gross cpd that means pelvic size is less than head or head is large than that pelvic uh, size so this is a simple technique where we can know whether the uh, pelvis is uh, contracted or baby's head is uh, small or large size by doing this pelvic uh, test or polyp test we can know whether the patient is cpd or not also by doing um, pspv examination we can uh, judge the patient which is of cpd group or which is normal so uh, by pspv examination usually we required um, simple things or septic precautions should be taken for this examination uh, bladder of patient should be emptied and proper septic precautions should be taken and this is usually preferably done after uh, usually it is done in the last trimester uh, after completion of uh, her uh, proper uh, term and usually it is advised in last uh, trimester so that if at all there is induction of labor because of our finger insertion or because of our examination then also baby's growth is complete so it is usually uh, preferably advised in last trimester so after taking proper aseptic precaution patient has to be given the proper position and we do pv examination by pv examination we actually feel the curve of sacrum the curve of sacrum with both the ischial tuberosities we measure the distance between the ischial spines we uh, measure the curve of sacrum sacrum ala so that side walls of the sacrum um, ischial spines a distance between ischial spines uh, is measured uh, and um, by this by doing this examination uh, we can know the pelvic cavity whether it is a normal pelvic cavity it is contracted so uh, we can uh, do our uh, next procedure and we can uh, judge the patient whether the patient is cpd or not so pspv examination is very important and uh, this should be done in very uh, septic precautions and uh, by proper uh, technique because we can rupture the bag of membrane or an amniotic fluid can leak and we can induce the labor before completion of her term so proper examination with proper technique should be done and uh, with this we measure the uh, walls of sacrum sacrum bone uh, the curve of sacrum distance between ischial spines 
and after that we confirm whether the patient is having contracted pelvis or patient is having normal pelvis uh, and by doing this examination we can label the patient if patient is cpd gross cpd that means no chance of uh, birth passage and no chance of vaginal delivery strictly we can uh, advise that patient for cesarean section so that excessive exertion of patient obstruction of uh, baby aspexia or hypoxia of baby and chances of fetal death can be avoided so it is better for mother and baby so gross cpd patients are directly advised for cesarean uh, average size uh, pelvis can be tried for vaginal delivery and normal uh, patients are usually uh, can have their uh, normal labor so this is about the investigation of uh, cpd usually it is clinical examination and uh, other things we can do um, um, usg if necessary and if for any orthopedic uh, related problems we can do x ray with proper precaution x rays for pregnancy are a separate uh, thing uh, because normal x rays are dangerous for patient uh, so x ray pelvimetry can be added because of the any orthopedic related things or better we nowadays we advise mri which is uh, safe for pregnant patient so any uh, orthopedic related cause can be ruled out with mri if there is tumor or anything we can advise ct scan so these are investigations which we advise for uh, cpd uh, now this is the things which we uh, which we uh, used to do for diagnosis up till now we had seen cpd that means cephalo pelvic disproportion cephalo pelvic disproportion means there is disproportion between fetal head and female pelvis so usual causes or uh, related factors uh, pelvic related factors are uh, either congenital nutritional developmental or injury or diseases because of that there may be any deformity in pelvis which can obstruct the labor uh, after the causes we come to uh, know for the uh, diagnosis of cpd by doing simple abdominal examination and vaginal examination we can um, do the diagnosis for cpd patient clear cpd patients are advised for cesarean and uh, clear uh, normal patients with gynecoid pelvis they are in, uh, advised for vaginal delivery moderate patients can be tried for vaginal delivery if other factors are favorable that means patient does not have any high risk factors those patients can have their uh, trial of vaginal delivery now after this diagnosis um, trial of labor can be given for patients some patients with moderate size of pelvis and the patient does not have any high risk factors like blood pressure diabetes or any other bad obstetric history previous history of any APH, PIH or any other complication relating to pre pregnancy, trial of vaginal delivery can be given and if uh, labor does not progress, FHS can be irregular and patient is exhausted, excessive pains, so in that, that condition we can refer that patient for caesarean. But usually gross CPD patient are strictly advised for caesarean because obstruction of labor is very difficult to manage because if baby is obstructed in pelvis, then it is uh, very difficult uh, for having uh, elective caesarean also and to avoid the fetal death and maternal death uh, it is very complicated so uh, cpd should be diagnosed by clinical examination during the anc sessions and uh, patient should be referred accordingly so that is about cpd and treatment of cpd uh, see fellow pelvic disproportion is usually a surgical thing we cannot give some medicines to avoid the contracted pelvis because contracted pelvis is usually it may be congenital or acquired because of any major diseases so we cannot correct the diseases by giving medicine so if patient have contracted pelvis then she will have caesarean this is a simple thing if contracted pelvis we cannot do anything we cannot give some injections or we cannot give some medicines for the progress of labor because it is obstructed baby is obstructed in the pelvis if at all there is um, uh, uterine inertia or there is um, slow progress in labor we can give some injections to induce the labor we can induce the labor pains but in this condition induction of labor is not the thing we cannot induce because induction of labor again that causes exhaustion of patient and chances of uterine rupture because baby is obstructed in pelvis baby cannot clear that passage and baby cannot uh, deliver from that passage so uh, usually no medicines no injections can work in this condition 
contracted pelvis patients uh, should advise for cesarean so that is about cpd